n there certainly also are some <coughs> did you start yes <coughs> there certainly also are some parts of the demand curve with unelastic well uh, normally I don't see football matches but I could consider it if it was cheaper <coughs> and that <coughs> gives us <coughs> the idea of price discrimination. You have learned about it, I guess, in, <coughs> in microeconomics. Different prices to different groups. <coughs> and what's the condition for price discrimination is separatable, separable groups of buyers <coughs> with different price elasticities. Actual groups, season tickets in different kinds. <coughs> How should we price season tickets? <coughs> Rather high. That's the unelastic part of the demand. <coughs> so a considerable <coughs> no, <coughs> considerably part of <coughs> considerable I sense <coughs> part of the demand for season tickets is unelastic. The fans. I want to sit there next year as I did last year. Whoever they are playing. <coughs> okay, 5,000. <000. coughs> yes, it's okay. I want it anyway. <coughs> it isn't that easy, but <coughs> just to the extreme to understand <coughs> the thinking. Oh, tickets. <coughs> sold for every match. Well, 60%, 70% percent of the tickets are sold <coughs> as season tickets. Just about to fill up the remaining capacity of 38% we found was still open. In my mind, I would lowered the price of these tickets. But <coughs> you have to <coughs> remember that there is <coughs> it's, it's possible to <coughs> remember <laughs> from one year to the next that, aha, these were low. I will have discount for buying the season tickets. So it's, it isn't that easy, but <coughs> as, a <coughs> as a main conclusion, high price on season tickets and low price on single tickets. And especially hospitality tickets. If you buy one of these tickets, you get a, a meal. <coughs> they call it dinner, <laughs> but it isn't. <laughs> I have tried some of these dinners. You get them better on McDonald's, many of them. <laughs> But you pay as it was a five-star restaurant. <coughs> I attended uh, <coughs> uh, Emirates to watch an Arsenal match together with my son <coughs> two years ago. And I got <coughs> a hospitality ticket. And that was really a hospitality ticket. <laughs> you know, much by <coughs> the shall I take your coat? <coughs> You want a gin tonic, <coughs> <coughs> and so on, and a four <coughs> a meal consisting of four meals, shows between four wines, <coughs> and what was the price? I didn't pay for it. I I, I, I was given it, <coughs> but I checked the price. Six hundred pounds each. That means 7,000 Norwegian kroner <coughs> per purse, <laughs> per ticket. Well, that was a good price for the wine and the food. Then. <coughs> no, it wasn't that. It was a good price for the ticket. That's how they wrap it. Try to buy a ticket for a cup final. <coughs> you ask your club, oh yes, it's okay. You can get the ticket, but you have to buy <coughs> an airplane ticket. You have to buy a hotel ticket. You have to buy a <coughs> shirt. Shop, uh, <coughs> shop, and uh, sh shirt, and uh, shoes, and 
naturligt än så <coughs> mer <Mjölken. coughs> no. But the rest, <coughs> but it can sell much more. I've said that in 2006, you had added 60% to the ticket money by this state, up to Metz state. Here's <coughs> just uh, quickly <coughs> for parts of the income of Tippel Egon. You see match day income here. Yeah. Approximately one fourth of the income for Tippel Egon. 25% <coughs> in 2010. This inquiry just went to 2010. And you see the media writes <coughs> close to 10%. You, <coughs> you read about the media rights and uh, how they <coughs> matter for the clubs, but it's less than half of the ticket income. <coughs> Goodbye. <coughs> value of media rights <coughs> as part of the total income of the first league in Norway 12% in France 60% 60% Germany 30 Spain 40 England 50 well, if it is approximate figures football in media. <coughs> I've been speaking a little bit of it earlier. <coughs> we spoke about <coughs> the media rights out to TV2 in, in 2005 and all the <coughs> positive uh, <coughs> media <coughs> all it, it, it gave a lift in media <coughs> speaking about the pos positive uh, football of Norway, <coughs> mainly positive press, <coughs> and it lasted to 2007. Thing, the, the attendance was increasing. <coughs> the uh, <coughs> economy of the clubs was okay. The national team were <coughs> reaching playoff and qualifier. Thing, thing went the right way. <coughs> and then <coughs> national team failed in 2008. Starting something there. 2010 to 2012, <coughs> all these three years, <coughs> perhaps especially 2011, has been <coughs> called honors horribilis in the newspapers. <coughs> for Norwegian football. Everything went wrong. Nothing succeeded. The media rights in 2012 were sold to <coughs> Seymour, <coughs> Broad <coughs> Broadcasting of <coughs> no it <coughs> a broad. <coughs> and now sorry a narrow broadcasting of the matches. <coughs> the press is mainly negative. Three or four uh, pages in uh, Dagblad and Vega from time to time about how about the failure of Norwegian football. And that <coughs> it gives an atmosphere of failure given to football. FIFA ranking, <coughs> 93. We were second in the world. Second in the world. Brazil number one, Norway number two. Last <coughs> announced FIFA ranking, we were number 73. This <coughs> has to, it has something to do with the decline of spectators. Yeah, 
this is Norwegian. <coughs> it just took it from a newspaper. <coughs> the last sentence here. <coughs> a professor at the uh, University of B BI <coughs> in uh, Oslo. He's, uh, he is uh, <coughs> commenting on the sale of TV rights the last time. <coughs> it's <coughs> it's uh, it shows a hurry and greed. It seems like <coughs> some uh, some students of economics has been allowed to <coughs> write a paper on how to make money in a hurry. That's what he says <coughs> to a newspaper. Uh, it's a good thing. And then the last <coughs> object. <coughs> Reduction of <coughs> in 2008. <coughs> I was a member of a group <coughs> consisting of people from the Norwegian FA and uh, people from the clubs in Tippeligan, not so football as the organization of it, <coughs> who were discussing what can we do with Tippeligan? It had just been increased from 14 to 16. And the main, <coughs> the main wish from the people from the clubs was to extend to 18. Why? <coughs> Why would they extend to 18? Money. <laughs> more matches, more TV, <coughs> more sponsors, <coughs> more spectators. So they, <coughs> they were close to <coughs> suggest for <coughs> the annual meeting in Football Forbidden <coughs> to extend, expand the league to 18. Nowadays, <coughs> just another wording of it. A lot of <coughs> central persons in the Norwegian top football are speaking about reducing the number of teams down to 14 again, or even down to 12. And if they go down to 12, they say, okay, we could play double, or we could play triple, like they do in Denmark, for instance. In Denmark, there are 10 clubs playing three times. <coughs> Not just double, but they draw for the third one, which one should be home. <coughs> so here are alternatives. And I have made some calculation to see what really what would be the economic consequences of it if we do it. <coughs> it would mean reduction in match day income. It would mean reduction of income from sponsors, or it would mean reduction of income from media rights if we reduce the number of matches, the number of teams, and then the number of matches. The number of matches today, the 16 teams playing double, is 240, a 240 matches a year. Eight rounds, no, 20, <laughs> 30 rounds, eight matches. 8 times 30, 240. If we s keep it on 16, so there will, <coughs> of course, be no reduction. If we go down to 14 teams and play double, there will be 182 matches. That means 13 rounds of 7 matches. <coughs> a reduction of 58 matches a year. 58 matches less. 24%. <coughs> If we go down to 12 teams, back to where we were in the 90s, early 90s, <coughs> 182. That means, no, sorry, 132. <coughs> that means a reduction 
almost down to 50 percent <coughs> a reduction of 108 matches or 45 percent i think nobody is speaking uh, seriously about this alternative then they go to this one <coughs> okay go down to 12 teams <coughs> and let them play triple meet every other team two times no three times sorry <coughs> that means a reduction of 42 matches or 17 and a half percent there will be 198 matches instead of 240. this is the alternative these are the alternatives <coughs> and we have to make some assumptions if we should calculate what will happen economic consequences compared to the 16 teams we have today 17 and a half reduction that was 12 teams triple will give 10 percent reduction i assume 10 percent reduction in sponsor and media income for the remaining clubs for the clubs who still are there in the league because why why is that so they played 17 0.5% less matches. There are less matches to be shown on TV. There are less matches to <coughs> show the sponsors <coughs> times. 24%, that means going down to 14 teams, will give 15% reduction in sponsor and media income for remaining clubs. And if you do <coughs> the most uh, radical, uh, <coughs> go down to 12 and just play double, 40%, 45% we get, <coughs> if it is perhaps gone higher, but it <coughs> it's quite a reduction, down 20% in sponsor and media. Relegated clubs. <coughs> are equal to 70% of average, is my assumption. It's not the biggest <coughs> clubs, the clubs with the biggest budget who are supposed to be relegated when they cut. We are below, <coughs> the we are 30% <coughs> in my mind here, 30% below the average for these who get out of the lake. <coughs> And 50% reduction in sponsor income for rele uh, relegated clubs. When they go down to Adekwiligan, the sponsor in <coughs> income will be just a half. That's the assumptions. If we use these assumptions and make a calculation, we find the following. If we start going back 14 teams, 52 million, this is in million Norwegian crowns, 52 million will disappear from match day income. Less matches, same <coughs> number of spectators. Reduction in sponsor income will be 91 million. Reduction in income from media rights for the league as a whole, 56 million per year. And if you have close to 200 million a year in reduced income for the remaining clubs in the polygon. <coughs> the 14 clubs remaining will have 200 million less. to <coughs> play football with. The middle, <coughs> middle alternative here <coughs> is probably of less interest. <coughs> but you see, if we cut down to 45% <coughs> reduction, we will get less, uh, 96 million less in uh, match day income, 133 less in sponsor, 
75 in meteorites and it will cost 300 millions. 300 millions. <coughs> and perhaps more. I just went 20% down, you remember. 45% less matches and 20% drop in sponsor and media. You could have gone lo <coughs> further. <coughs> A real al alternative is to go down to 12 teams and play three times. 37 million lost in match day income. 98 million lost in sponsor and 37 and a half million lost in media rights, altogether 172 million. So I think the realistic alternatives are these two. <coughs> Giveaway. <coughs> Why are so many <coughs> intelligent persons speaking about reducing the league if it's so? There must be reason. <coughs> yeah. Uh, they say <coughs> to, to develop good players. We have to have good uh, arenas, <coughs> and then they have to meet good clubs, qualified <coughs> clubs have to meet each other, <coughs> better skill <coughs> from better performance from all the teams remaining. It's about development of talents. Well. <coughs> You have to pay <coughs> at least 172 million then to get this opportunity <coughs> to develop the players. <coughs> and you have 172 million less money to use on development of players in these 14 clubs. Mm. In my opinion, it's <coughs> meaningless. I can't find any argument. If I, <coughs> if I try to understand the arguments of sports, <coughs> say, I, I, I can't understand that <coughs> if, let's say four clubs disappear from Fifth League on, that means that 120 players from somewhere in uh, Norway. Probably at least half of them from uh, regions with who would not have an alter alternative club in the upper lake. They would not have <coughs> a scene for the youngsters <coughs> to play in the upper lake. They would not have <coughs> a locomotive <coughs> for the interest of football <coughs> in the region. Mm. And it cost them 172 million. Uh, I, I can't understand why. <coughs> but <coughs> we will see. On the annual meeting of uh, Norwegian Football Forbund <coughs> in March next year, I guess this will be discussed. And my guess is we will stay at 16. It's common sense to me to stay there. And I think the arguments <coughs> will be breaking down and <coughs> we will end up with 16 clubs also after the annual meeting. The boss of <coughs> top football in uh, the FA, Nils Johansen, is very, very <coughs> anxious to go to 12 clubs. So it's needed, he says. Oh, yes. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I, I, I don't say that I see everything right and he says everything wrong. But in my opinion, he is wrong. And it will cost him some money, not him, the clubs. That's what we have seen here. Oh, yes, but <coughs> some of you probably thought when I <coughs> made
made the assumption whales shouldn't the number of spectators increase when we go down to swell. We get rid of some of them. If you take the <coughs> table now, we get rid of uh, Songdal, Haugesen, uh, Sannesulf, <coughs> and Bram. <coughs> uh, just at the moment, it's like this. Well, <coughs> perhaps the number of spectators on average will increase them. Yeah, but what did we see earlier today? We saw that it doesn't matter which team is coming to visit. The people come to see the home team. <coughs> there won't be more people <coughs> on average <coughs> in Stavanger, Kristiansand, Molde, <coughs> if you get rid of these four at the bottom. Because they are just like the others. To <coughs> determine how many people will come to see Molda at a home match or start at a home match. But <coughs> I, I made a thought. <coughs> okay, what need what is needed to get even? To get even, <coughs> to compensate for what is lost on the alternatives. <coughs> An average of 11,787 is required. And the maximum capacity within the stadiums of the 16 clubs in the Tipe Liga at the moment is 11,272. That means we have to build new stadium there. <coughs> so, okay, you made a mistake because you <coughs> should expect the sponsor income and the media rights income to increase if you get that kind of increase in uh, attendance. That's right. So perhaps 10,000 <coughs> would do it because the media rights and uh, the value of the media rights and the sponsor money also would increase if we get that kind of increase in uh, attendance. 12 clubs, three matches. <coughs> we need 79% increase to get even, not to say here, <laughs> but this is, I think this is just theoretically not interesting. Well, if you were at the annual meeting with a voting right <coughs> in March next year, what would be your vote? Well, teams of course. <laughs> You're free to, <coughs> it's up to you. But you have to be a member of a club and be elected as a delegate first. <laughs> Take some time. A summary. <coughs> Arguments to explain the growth in attendance for the Tipe Liga 98 to 2008. It grew even up to 2008, I remember. <coughs> Number one, facilities. <coughs> number one and number two and number three, facilities. The most important one. Competitive balance. <coughs> I think that's number two. Uh, new clubs com came up as medalists, as winners. And media. <coughs> The new media deal with TV2 in 2005 and the common positive attitude from the media, from the press altogether <coughs> in this peri period. And even if I should have one more 
the performance of the national team. The decline when it started going the other way. <coughs> I should have had <coughs> uh, loss of uh, loss of novel novelty interest in the new stadiums. I didn't bring it in here, I just took it in, <coughs> just took it in <coughs> for the grouse, but also for the decline. Okay, I have seen it, mm. decline of interest. Competing activities, <coughs> I think this is important. The new patterns <coughs> in family structures, new, <coughs> new, uh, alternatives for use of time and spare time, the youth with the playing machines and uh, yeah, <coughs> all, all that, <coughs> the new world, <coughs> technical, match time, well I would have been there if I knew there was a match, <coughs> the difficulties to plan, because of spread of the matches, the negative press. Well, I couldn't think to be a part of a falling star. And performance. The Norwegian clubs <coughs> have not succeeded in the UEFA tournaments. They don't come in, lose in the qualifiers over and over again. The national team is going like this on FIFA ranking. There's something here. <coughs> you have to admit that. So performance is not just technical reasons, also performance. Spectators come to see the home team and the performance of the team of other teams of the team. <laughs> yeah, no. it's difficult to read <coughs> because it was difficult written. <laughs> Spectators come to see the home team and the performance of the team affect the attendance. The performance of the home team, not the away team. A reduction of teams in Tippeligan is an expensive experiment for Tippeligan. And that's what I had planned to say. I spoke a little bit faster now. <laughs> so it's, <coughs> it's close to three o'clock. <laughs> we are before. Ah, oh, five minutes left. <coughs> Any questions? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the uh, match time. Yeah. Now, uh, who is uh, responsible in determining the exact time to play uh, football? Is it the FA or do they have to agree with the TV stations? Because you, you yeah. have more people watching on TV than yeah. the real thing. Yeah. Thing. There's a very simple <coughs> answer to that question. The TV <coughs> companies decides it all. Match time. They decide match time, but <coughs> the FA and the clubs, uh, mostly the clubs because it affects them <coughs> most, they have accepted it. So, okay, we get more money. Yeah, I got it. okay, okay. <coughs> but we want to send there, 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 and there. And we give you another 200 uh, millions in a four years period or so. so okay. <coughs> but it comes from the TV companies <coughs> and it is accepted by the clubs. Uh, the last, <coughs> the last uh, negotiations from uh, the clubs with uh, the, the TV company, Seymour. <coughs> uh, they, <coughs> the persons who were in the negotiation, Moskva Football, they, <coughs> sorry, they did not ask the clubs. <coughs> they asked two clubs out of sixteen before they signed the agreement. And <coughs> they told, I, I know this for certain, and they told the Norwegian FA 
that the club had agree had agreed, but they hadn't. They weren't asked. They did it on behalf of them, and it was quite the <coughs> uh, member meeting in the association of clubs. But they couldn't go back on it, and it was signed. If they had had this discussion in advance before they signed. I don't think it would have been like this, but th that's a personal uh, guess. <coughs> I don't know. But the TV companies are the ones to decide. Ada? Still one minute left. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have to prepare for the match tomorrow. <coughs> <laughs> or perhaps you are going to theater tonight, uh, <laughs> cinema. <laughs> Maybe you're singing. Talk <laughs> for. <coughs> I forgot one thing. Uh, all these uh, figures will be given to you. Okay. I, I, I give it to uh, Ketil and he distributes it. Okay? And if, if someone, there was a question here, <coughs> if someone has a question about something going behind this, okay. you are allowed to. <coughs> Contact me. I have <coughs> I have a mail address on uh, here Timolda. Sandra Punktum also K Fjor the two A two A's K A A F Timolda. Have a nice weekend.